I invite you to stand. Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honor of all the saints, at whose festival the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries on the feast, the solemnity, this incredible day of all saints, we recognize that every time, every time we pray, we are surrounded by the saints. Every time we pray, we're surrounded by the angels. That's one of the reasons why later on in Mass we'll pray the Holy, Holy, Holy. We are echoing the praises that are given to God in the book of Revelation. We're echoing the praises that are given to God in heaven right now. We actually get to be, because what happens at Mass is, it's time and eternity touch, and then heaven and earth meet here in this place. And so I know that you're unable to get to Mass. Um, I think I mentioned this the last Sunday as well. It's just like, we, you know, we pray this Mass, we offer this Mass for you, with all the saints, with all the angels, for, for those of you who are going through a horrible or difficult season of your life. We offer this Mass for you if you've already gone to Mass, but you wanted to join us virtually as well. And we just know that just our prayers are with you. Um, and not only are you not alone when it comes to the church here on earth, but you're not alone because you are part of the church militant, that's us. You're part of the church suffering, those souls in purgatory, and you are part of the church triumphant. One body of Christ, we're united. And at this Mass, we celebrate the fact that we are united in all the saints with God as our Father. And so we come before the Lord, calling to mind our sins and calling upon his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You live to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on Amen. earth, peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. But you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the four heads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal. 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They crowd out, cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might. Be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, 
These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? On one whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires what is not, what not is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know when it we do not know that when it is revealed we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I should have a seat. So um, this, the second reading today is just remarkable, right? So it's from 1 John. And in, in 1 John, he has these words, and the words are, See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. And yet, that's what we are. And I think so one thing on the Feast of All Saints, on this day, one thing to realize is that the saints are not saints because they were perfect. The saints are not saints because they didn't have flaws. The saints aren't saints because they figured out all their stuff. And like that, that, that when you met them, they were just like a plaster statue of an individual, or a human being. The saints are flawed. The saints are not perfect. I mean, again, just get this. Uh, I don't know how many times you hear, hear stories of recent saints, Saint Mother Teresa, uh, John Paul II, stories of way old saints, St. Saint Augustine, St. Saint Jerome, saints of all these kinds of saints, St. Saint Teresa of Avila, who like were, they were holy. That did not mean that they were perfect. It didn't mean that they were not flawed. The saints carried their flaws through their whole lives. Some of those flaws were healed. Some of those flaws were dealt with. They carried their imperfections throughout life, and some of those imperfections were healed, and some of those imperfections were dealt with. But it was not being, it was not for lack of being flawed, and it was not because they were perfect, it's not because they made the right decision in every situation that made them saints. What made them saints is exactly what St. John is saying here in 1 John chapter 3. Again, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, 
that we may be called the children of God, and yet that is exactly what we are. So I, I see everything, we have, to, we have to understand this, that a, a saint is not a saint because they're perfect. A saint is a saint because they belong to the Lord God. That's it. A saint is a saint not because they don't make mistakes, but because they have surrendered their whole life to Jesus, including their mistakes. And this is something that so many of us can forget because we think that our mistakes, we think that our flaws, we think our imperfections, we think that because we're not there yet, we think that our sins actually disqualify us from being God's children and disqualify us from being God's saints. But everything surrendered to God qualifies us to belong to him. Because that's what a saint does. A saint simply surrenders everything to God, including their imperfections, including their flaws, including their bad decisions, and yes, including their sins. This is what we have to understand. That's one of the reasons why when St. Paul writes to uh, various groups of people, the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Ephesians, he calls them the saints, not because they were perfect in Ephesus or in Corinth or wherever they were from, but because they belonged to God, because God had, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he had made them his children through baptism. And so they've been set apart. They were consecrated. They were already saints. They just simply had to live it out. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like, um, I don't know if you've ever had teachers like this. Teachers who, when you come in on the first day, they say, okay, everyone, everyone starts off with an A. Not like everyone starts with a zero. Everyone starts with an A. It's yours to lose <laughs> in so many, so many ways. When it, comes to, when it comes to the Lord, after baptism, at baptism, he gives us an A. We all have an A. And we get to, we can, we can live that way. And that, again, not perfectly and not without flaws, not without making mistakes, but we can live it in the sense that I know I have a father. I know he's transformed me into his beloved son or his beloved daughter. And as long as I continue to give him whatever I have, my strength, it's his. My success, it's his. My failure, it's his. My weaknesses, they're his. As long as I keep giving him whatever he asks for, whatever I have, you still have that A. You're that saint. Let's go over this one more time, just because it's really important for us to understand. A saint is not someone who has no flaws, no imperfections, doesn't make bad mistakes or bad decisions. A saint is not someone who doesn't sin. They strive not to sin. They strive to do their best. They strive for excellence. A saint is someone who simply says, my strength is yours. My weaknesses are yours. My victories are yours. Lord God, my failures, my defeats are yours. My, the, 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 the gift you've given me, they're yours. And the sins that I've committed, they're also yours. See how, it, it, because of Jesus, it is not just possible to be a saint. Because of Jesus, it's kind of, I don't want to say it like this, but it's kind of easy to be a saint. Because of Jesus, because he did all the heavy lifting, right? He is the one who reconciled us with the Father. He's the one who poured out his Holy Spirit with the Father to transform us into sons and daughters of God. So now all we have to do it's so simple. All that we have to do is let him have it. Our lives, our hearts. We don't have to be perfect. In fact, you've maybe heard this before, but it's true. I think it was St. Teresa of Avila who said this. It could have been Catherine of Siena. They're both really wise women. They're both doctors of the church. Saying, God does not love us despite our sins. Like that he sees us in the midst of our sins and like, yeah, but still, I love them. They're lovable. God does not love us in spite of our sins. He loves us because of our sins. That God loves us. His, his heart goes out to us. The more we need him, the, the more we need him, the more he's willing to give us his love. The more that, that we're in desperation, the more he pours out his grace. So it makes sense in some ways to pity those who are strong. In some ways, it makes sense to pity those who have never fallen down. In some ways, and not always, but in some ways, it makes sense to pity those who have never needed God desperately like you and I have needed him. Of course, it's a grace to stay out of mortal sin, obviously. The greater grace, in some ways, is to have fallen greatly, but have to have been loved greatly in the midst of that fall. To have become deathly ill and then to have been nursed back to life by the love of God. Your sins, your weaknesses, your failures do not disqualify you from being a saint. The saints are not saints because they didn't have those things. They're saints because of God's grace. 
and because they let God's grace touch every aspect of their lives. That's why we're here today. And that's why we're celebrating this feast today, because we have names of saints, but we know that there are, just we heard in the first reading from the, book of Revela- from the book of Revelation, that there are so many unnamed and unknown saints. They're unknown to us, and only unknown to us right now. The day will come when we know all of them. But every one of them is known to God, and this is their day. This is the day for all those who don't have yet a capital ST period in front of their name. This is their day. And they're cheering you on. They're here. We know that whenever we pray the Mass, we are surrounded by every saint, we're surrounded by every angel, but also this, we know that the church is one, right? So the church gloriously, church triumphant in heaven, that's the same church as the church on earth, and the same church as the church is in purgatory, right? Church triumphant, the church militant, us, we're on our way, right? We have to keep fighting for the Lord, and the church suffering in purgatory. It's one body of Christ. We're united, and they are with us, and we're with them. And we need them. In fact, I tell the story every single All Saints Day, but I, I can't, uh, I can't not because it is, it's too good, it's too important for us to realize that here, as you're surrendering everything, my weaknesses, my strength, God, you get it all. You're not alone. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. In fact, that's what the letter to the Hebrews says. He letter to the Hebrews, chapter twelve. It says after the author talks about all the great holy men and women from the Old Testament, he then goes on to say, he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Right, this is incredible cloud of uh, people who have said yes to the Lord. Since we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that's set before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. And it reminds me of this, again, this, so back in the day when I used to do like endurance stuff, my whole family did those things. And a number of times we did the Ironman triathlon. So the Ironman triathlon is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a 26.2 mile run. And so my family, that was our family vacation growing up. We would, like my, someone would train for it and we'd all go to cheer them on. So I didn't do all of them. I think my dad has done the most, maybe. My sister, maybe after that, my little brother after that. I did two. Um, but everyone has done, more or less everyone has done one. In fact, for our uh, my in-laws, in order to get married in the family, they had to do a triathlon, at least one Iron Man. It's, it's, I'm serious, they really had to do this. Um, it just worked out that way. I don't think there was a, a, back to our story. It's a long race, but it was one of these things where my family would come together. One of my favorite races of all time was, I think we had six of us in the family do this race. We all finished. So you have to start at 7 a.m. and with everybody, and you need to finish the race, 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, 26.2 mile run. You have to finish by midnight that night. So it's a really, really long day for some people. So what we would do as a family is what a lot of people would do is you'd finish your race, you'd cool down, you know, shower, whatever, get some food, and then go back to the finish line for, to cheer on the people who are still out there because some people, it took them the entire time, it took them until midnight to finish. And so you go back there and it's this big party. Now, we would go to this place called Penticton, British Columbia. It's in, it's in Canada. And um, they, they, I think they have the best Ironman of all because not only is it in the mountains and it's just incredible, but because the finish, the run race, the run route is out, you know, half marathon and back half marathon. So as you're running back into town, they pull, up, pull out all the stops. Like a ton of people will come to cheer people on. So like, I don't know, five miles to the finish, there's already people lining the streets. And so like those last five miles are really kind of, kind of hard at the end of a long day. And so people are cheering you on as you go in, but as you get it closer and closer to the center of the town, it's not just one you know, shoulder to shoulder, it's like layers of people. And then what happens is the last 100 meters or so is you take a hard right, uh, 90 degree angle to the left. And then there's this, like there's bleachers they set up and there's this big banner, like all these balloons and there's all this music happening. Someone's on the microphone like cheering you in and everyone's just going nuts, it's awesome. So what our families would do is we get as I said, showered and rested and everything fed, and we get back to the finish line. I remember one year, it was, we were standing, we were sitting in the bleachers right in front of the finish line. And so down the way was that the last 100 meters and back was the, you know, people running to town. So it's like 11.30, somewhere 11.45, something like this. And uh, the guy's on the, on the microphone, he's cheering people on. And at 11.45, he says, you guys, we just got word. There's a racer out there. And he's two miles away. So just bring him in. And so, I thought like, wow, that's great. He's two miles away, but he's got 15 minutes to run two miles, which a person could do, but this person has been, I, mean, I don't know if this person could do it because they've been out on the course this long. I don't know if they can run that fast. But people, like they jumped off the bleachers and like ran across the little park behind us and like started running. I'm like, that good for you guys because I can't, I can't move my legs. And then later on, you know, I don't know, how, however long later, the guy gets on and he says, you guys, he's only, a, he's only a mile away right now. I was like, whoa, that's crazy because he picked up his pace clearly. 
some more people jumping off the bleachers and running across the park, the, uh, the, pic, the, the park to get to where he was. So it's time going on. They're getting, giving us these updates. And pretty soon, it's like 11.59 or 11.59 plus. And remember, so, so distinctly, from back and to the right, there was this like just growing, growing dull roar that's just getting louder and louder and louder. And as we're looking down the, this, this street, the main street, all of a sudden you can see this guy and he's, he tears across the, tears, tears, around, tears around this corner, like he's leaning into the corner, like racing for everything he's got. And behind him, he's sprinting. This is the guy that they've been cheering on. Behind him is this massive like V formation filling up the entire road of people who had completed the race, but they're cheering him on, running him into this thing. When he, he came across that finish line, and everyone's going nuts, everyone's going crazy. It was 11.59 and 47 seconds. Like he, he, he did it with 13 seconds to spare. And remember just, I mean, again, everyone, I even, I tell the story all the time and I mean, you, you get choked up because of the fact that, not just because this guy did this great thing and I think it's really cool that he did this, but it reminds me of what is written here in the letter to the Hebrews. We're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So let's persevere in running the race. I don't think that man could have finished the race the way he did unless there were people who themselves, they had finished the race, who went out and cheered, went back and cheered him on. They couldn't run the race for him, but they could support him. And this is, is this mysterious way that that's what the saints do with us. They can't run the race for us. They can't live a life for us. They can't surrender our lives for us, but they can cheer us on. They can intercede for us. They can pray for us. And they do. And so when you think, oh, there's no way. There's no way I can finish this race. Like it's too far gone. There's no way possible that I can make it to the finish line. Realize you're not running alone. And you're not just running with St. Augustine and, and, and St. Mother Teresa or St. Catherine of Siena, all these big name saints. You're also running with all those saints whose name you don't know yet. This is their feast day. And they're running with you and they're interceding for you and they are praying for you because they know the truth. And the truth is that one day, their feast day will be your feast day. One day, November 1st, will not just be their feast day. One day, November 1st, will be your feast day. This will be the day that your kids will celebrate the fact that you said yes. One day, and this will be the day your grandkids will celebrate, not that you were perfect, not that you didn't have flaws, not that you made all the right decisions. Celebrate the fact that you let God have it all. You let him have all of the bad decisions. You let him have all the flaws. You let him have all the imperfections. You let him have all the sins. One day, this won't just be the feast day of people you don't know. One day, this will be your feast day. And that day, we'll ask for your prayers. And that day, you'll be the one cheering us on, on this feast day of all saints. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith, the faith that was professed by saints for the last 2,000 years. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's love for us and at all times and in all ways, we approach him now with all of our needs. That in union with all the saints, the church on earth may be faithful, may be a faithful bride and servant of her Lord Jesus Christ, bearing faithful witness to his gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That following the example of the saints, the spiritual leaders of the church may see God's kingdom above everything else and be inspiring witnesses of a holy life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That seeking the wisdom of the saints, government leaders may put their own interests aside and make whatever sacrifices are necessary to serve those who elected them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That relying on the prayers of the, the prayers of the saints, we may work for justice for all the poor, the oppressed, and the unborn, whose most basic rights are denied. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That learning from the suffering of the saints, all who are ill may grow in their trust of God, who brings us consolation in all our trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That longing to be with the saints, those who have died may be gathered into the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue our prayer by offering our Diocese of Duluth prayer for vocations, and I invite you to pray for vocations here in our diocese as well as in your own as we pray, Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families, to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and in all of his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to already be assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of your church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, 
we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to guard, grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dan Dan Daniel, our Bishop, and those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants for whom we now pray. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, in hope of health and well-being, for the redemption of your soul, their souls, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most, your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and, and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask, O Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, 
Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will, shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. Let us pray. 
We adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints. We implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, two quick things. One is uh, that very soon, uh, yeah, this month, November 1st, uh, November 16th, it's a Thursday night. It, it is our like Newman Bold Like Catholic Day of Thanks. And so that night at 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, online. You'll be able to find it online uh, easily when the day comes, Thursday, November 16th. It's our Newman Day of Thanks. Basically, um, it's an opportunity, if you're interested, if you're part of this community, it's an opportunity to kind of get to know, like the staff to get, get to know um, myself and Lauren and Heather, to get to know the focus team. We have a bunch of new missionaries. Some of them you've seen, some of you haven't seen. It's also an opportunity to have, we're gonna have like a Q&A. It's just gonna go for one hour from seven o'clock Central Standard Time to eight o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, and if you're interested in like having, you have questions, we have hopefully have some kind of response, some kind of answer. And so if you're interested at all, it's it's kind of our, our day that we ask people to be part of our ministry. That's not only in prayer, and that's also financially, but also get to know the ministry. That is an incredible opportunity. It's coming up just in 16 days from now, uh, November 16th, Thursday, seven o'clock, that's awesome. You're invited, be part of that. The second thing is I, wow, I, during mass today, I didn't realize, okay, here is this, this is the first mass that I get to, I mentioned how, um, you know, one day your kids will say, this is your mom's, your dad's feast day. Like, I didn't realize. This is the first time I get to actually celebrate my mom's holy day, this is my mom's feast day. It's just such a huge gift. So, sorry for the emotions, but there they are, you know, we're not robots. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, just got to power through it, right? Um, man, but what a great, incredible thing. And then this is, this is the first time I ever got to celebrate this Mass on my mom's feast day with you. So thank you so much for praying. We keep our prayers going because we recognize that your heart's been broken too. You, you've had loss too. You're praying for people as well. And so we all pray together, surrounded by the saints. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Sove Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do. Et spes nostra salve, a te clamamus, exules filii eve, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, Ad nos converte, et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, ostende, o clemens, o peace.